How's it going, you guys? So today we're going to go over a graph-based problem called All Paths from Source to Target. A lot of you have been requesting to do more graph problems, so that's what I intend to do. So the description says, given a directed acyclic graph of n nodes, find all possible paths from node 0 to node n minus 1 and return them in any order. The graph is given as follows. The nodes are 0, 1, all the way up to graph.length minus 1. And then graph at index i is a list of all nodes j for which the edge ij exists. So to explain this problem a little bit in detail, I'm going to go over an example. So we are always given an acyclic graph. So an acyclic graph pretty much just means that we are never going to have a cycle in our graph. So if we had the following graph, 0, 1, 2, 3, and then they have all of their appropriate connections, you can see that nowhere in this graph are we going to get stuck in an infinite loop. So what we need to do for this problem is we need to find all of the paths from node 0 all the way up to the amount of nodes we have minus 1. So we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4 nodes. But since it's zero based, we do four minus one, and that would mean that three is our goal node and zero is our start node. So let's go over all of the paths for this graph. Starting at node zero, we wanna to get to node three. So from node zero, I can go to node one and node two. From node one, I can just go to node three. So since we've reached node three, that is a path. So we went from zero, one, to three, right? That's one path that we found. Then if we go over to two, we can go up to one or we can go over to three. Since three is a goal state, we found another path. Zero, two, and three. And then finally, we, from two, we went to one. That means from one, we can only go to node three. So the last path is zero, two, one, and three. So to solve this problem, you can use either a DFS or a BFS approach. For the solution I'm going over, I'm going to be doing the BFS approach, which is going to involve a queue. So before I jump into a step-by-step -step explanation of the BFS approach, we need to understand how our input is formatted for us. So if we look at this input right here, we have an array containing 1, 2, an array containing 3, an array containing 1, 3, and then an empty array. So let's first look at this first array. So the index is our source node. So we're looking at index 0. And then the numbers inside of this array are the destination nodes. So we have 0 connected to 1. That's this path right here, right? 0 connected to 2, this path right here. Then if we look at this array, we have 1, we're at index 1, connected to 3, so that makes that connection. For this one, we have 2 connected to 1, 2 connected to 3, and then finally we look at our end, we have an empty array, 3 does not have any connections. So this is important to understand because we need to know how we can extract the neighbors or the connections from our nodes. Okay, let's go over the BFS approach. So we're gonna be utilizing a queue, right? And we're also going to be returning a list of lists from our function. And this list of lists is going to be all of the paths that we have found after we have done the BFS. So inside of this queue, we're going to be storing a list of numbers, which will represent the path that we have seen thus far. So to start our BFS off, we need to add in the current path that we're on. And right now, we're just going to start at node 0, right? We're always going to start at node 0. So to start this off, we're going to add in node 0, and it's going to be a list, right? Because this represents the path that we're on thus far. And then we're going to pull from our queue. So after we pull this list, right, so we remove zero, we need to check the very last element inside of this list because the last element inside the path is the one that we need to continue our BFS on. But before we do that, we need to determine if the last node that we're currently looking at is in fact our goal node. So in our, in our case, our goal node is three. Obviously, 0 is not equal to 3, 
So what that means is we need to continue our BFS from node zero. So from node zero, we can go to node one and we can go to node two. So we need to add two separate lists inside of this queue because they represent two different paths. So we're gonna add in path zero one and then we're gonna add in path zero two. And then we're just gonna continue this process as normal. We're going to pop from our queue. Once we pop from our queue, we need to view the very last element inside of this list. So the last element inside of this list would be one. Obviously one is not equal to our goal state of three. So we need to continue BFS from node one. From node one, we can only go to node three because that's our only connection. So we need to add this path to our queue. So that would be zero, one, and three. And then we're going to pull from our queue again. So we pulled zero, two. We look at the very last element in this path. We can see two is not equal to our goal state. So we continue our BFS from node two. From node two, we can go to node one and node three. So let's first go to node one. That means we need to add that path. And then we're, we can go from two to three and that would be zero, two, three. And then we pull from the queue again. So we have pulled zero, one, three. Since the last node in our list is the goal state, that means we have successfully found one of the paths and we can add this list to the result. So we've added this list to the result. Now we need to pull from our queue again. So we're currently looking at zero, two, one. The last node in this list is one, which is not equal to our goal state. So we continue BFS from node one. So we're currently at node one again, and we can only go to node three another time. And then we're gonna pull from our queue two more times. But as you can see, both of these lists contain our goal node as the last node in the list, three and three. So what that tells us is when we pull both of these lists, we're going to get to add both of these lists into our result. So our final result, has a total of three different paths from node zero to node three. So the function we're given, we have to return a list of lists, which is the paths, and then we're given a 2D integer array representing the graph. So the first thing we wanna do is just create this list of lists. And now since we want to do the BFS approach, we need to initialize a queue. And now since we want to do the BFS approach, we have to initialize a queue. So remember our queue is going to be storing a list of integers because it's going to be holding the paths. And so to kick off our BFS, we need to add in the node zero. So we can say queue.add arrays.asList and we're adding in node zero to just kick off the BFS. And now we want to start pulling from our queue. So we can say while our queue is not empty, let's pull from our queue. So we're gonna grab the list of integers and this will be the path that we are taking off. And so we need to check if the last element in our path is in fact our goal node. And so our goal node is going to be whatever graph.length minus one is. So we can initialize another integer up here. We can say int goal node, it's gonna be equal to graph.length minus one. And minus one because it's zero based. And now we need to grab the very last node inside of our path that we have just pulled from the queue. So we can say int last node is gonna be equal to path dot get of path dot size minus one. So the very last element in this list of integers. And we need to determine if the goal node is equal to our last node. If they are equal, that means we have successfully found a path. So if our last node is equal to our goal node, then we need to add it in. So we're just gonna add in the path to the result. If this is not true, that means we are just gonna continue our BFS as normal. So if we make it to this point, we need to extract the neighbors from our last node. 
but since last node is just an index inside of our graph. So we can easily grab the neighbors. So we can say int of neighbors equals graph at index of last node. And now we just need to loop over our neighbors array and create new paths. And then we're going to create new integer arrays. So we can say list equals a new array list copied from the path that has just come in. So this is how we're going to build off of the previous paths that we have seen. And then we simply add the neighbor inside of our new list, and then add this list inside of our queue. So queue.addList. And then finally, all we need to do is just return our result. So let's make sure this code works. Cool. So the complexity analysis for this solution is a little bit complicated, but our time complexity is going to be n squared times 2 to the n. So let's break this down. The 2 to the n, where n is the number of nodes that we have in our graph, comes from the fact that for every single path, we could have either two cases. That current node can be in the path or it won't be in the path. So for every single possible combination, we could have two to the n paths. And as for the n squared portion, if you look at line 18 and 19, we can see that 18 is looping over all of our neighbors, so all of our nodes. And then 19 has to copy over all of the elements in the path that it has seen thus far into a new list. So that's where the n squared comes from. So we combine it 2 to the n times n squared. And then as for our space complexity, it is going to be 2 to the n because we have a total of 2 to the n paths. And in the worst case, we have to add every single path into our result list that we initialize on line 3. So 2 to the n for our space complexity. So that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.